if you can't have folks advocating for better nutrition assistance and better pay, better wages at the same time with their own staff being forced to live on food stamps. We don't usually hear much from congressional staffers because they do so much of their work out of public view, but that seems to be changing. Congressional staffers are severely underpaid and, and overworked at starting salaries between like 30,000 and 40,000 in one of the nation's most expensive cities. To be honest, I wouldn't have been able to take this job had my dad not passed away uh, when I was 20 years old. He had a life insurance plan out for me and I had a small chunk of savings. That allowed me to come to the hill and, and really survive my first like two years. I made $30,000, lived in a giant group house, but I had to work a second job at a restaurant. I felt like I was running myself ragged and really living paycheck to paycheck. Going to the doctor was out of the question. Going to therapy was out of the question. Many people have tons of horror stories. People are physically abused, mentally abused, to some very severe points of, of depression and, and much worse and weeks where you were working 16 hours a day, seven days a week. I've been on the Hill for two years. I haven't taken more than a day or two off at a time. I was one of only two people of color in an office, a staff of 16 people. That office was not an exception to the rule, but was the rule. So when we tackle issues like criminal justice, issues that affect specific communities, and then you realize that no one from those communities is actually in the room where the decisions are being made, that's a big issue. And what you're seeing as a result of, you know, the horrible work conditions from culture of sexual harassment to these horrible unlivable wages to 60 plus 70 hour work weeks, you're seeing a brain drain from Congress to powerful special interests who seek to influence it. And that makes it harder for our bosses to legislate in ways that reflect the best interest of their constituents. Having a union to benefit the workplace and give people a voice on the job is probably one of the most effective ways to actually help Congress help the American people. Back in 1995, Congress passed the Congressional Accountability Act, and in 1996 it was implemented. And this was supposed to allow workers on Capitol Hill to be able to form unions and bargain collectively. But at that time, Congress applied it to sort of everybody except the people who worked directly with us. For 26 years, Congress failed to apply the freedom to form a union and bargain collectively to our own employees, the people who work in our district offices, in our DC offices, and on our committees. Sign it here. Michigan Democratic Congressman Andy Levin introduced a resolution today that would allow House staffers to form a union. Congressional staff workers are one step closer to forming a union. You know, I feel like the momentum is incredible and it's all due to these workers and their movement. In the Senate, Senator Sherrod Brown is planning to introduce a resolution to allow Senate staff to unionize. Congressional unions are vocally supported by the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, and President Joe Biden. Some of the nation's largest unions have come out in support. Employers often say, oh, I support workers' rights to have a union, but when it comes to their own workers, all of a sudden they get cold feet. <laughs> and we here in Congress really need to walk the walk. As the resolution came out, one of the things we started hearing from a lot of senior staff and even some members behind closed doors is, you know, either feigned confusion of we're not sure what a union could look like, on the Hill because the Hill is so different. Union elections for congressional staff would be run the very same way union elections have been run for every other employee in America for nearly a century. Our bosses ran on a labor platform promising to give and protect every worker's right to organize. Every Democrat but one voted to pass the PRO Act. At the same time, the staffers who actually wrote that bill don't have that own right in their own workplaces. And all we're asking for is for them to apply those same values to the halls of Congress. You're seeing workers organize at Starbucks, at Amazon, digital media workers all across the country organizing and bargaining for a better life. And I feel like our own employees deserve the same rights that everybody else does. The Congressional Workers Union is here. We're going to keep organizing and we're going to win.